From newatlas.com, eight flying taxis that are so crazy, they just might work. And if you've been listening to Adam versus the Man since the early days, you've heard me talk about this before. And it's a huge marker of human progress that we all have self-flying cars. And we're about to be there, about to be there. And I was saying this back in 2012, 2013 with, with Adam versus the man from the basement in Virginia. And now it's so close that we can smell it. So this article is uh, from Nick Lavars, and I want to give him credit for this, and I'm going to skim through this. But I, I, I just want to hit the high points here that give you a sense of how close this technology is. So if these kinds of aircraft were to become commonplace, it would be a fundamental shift in how cities function. Although plenty of skepticism still abounds, someone who needs no convincing of either their potential or impending arrival is Vikas Prakash, a professor of mechanical and aerospace engineering at Case Western Reserve University. Quote, I don't have any doubts. In a few years, you will be able to call an air taxi from Uber or someone else to travel maybe 100 miles in a vehicle with two other people. I'm very excited about this. Me too! And you, you've probably heard me uh, do the old version back in 2013 of the rant about marijuana delivery, that this is what you're going to have in the future. I know we're going to have it because I want it. And I don't know if I want it, somebody else wants it. And because we have the technology, it'll be there. And don't worry, there's a punchline in this story that gets even better. But I'm, I'm waiting for the day there's an app on my phone that I can pull up all the nearby grow ops and dispensary points and pull up menus with flight times for delivery and press a button and pay in cryptocurrency and minutes later it drops out of the sky into my hands from a drone. That's coming. But first, drone taxis. Prakash recently received a $1.3 million grant from NASA to develop advanced batteries capable of powering such electric air vehicles. We put a few questions to him about how, when, and why we might see these things in action. Why do you think we are on the precipice of a flying taxi revolution? Quote, driven by concerns about climate change, governments and companies worldwide are making plans for a post-oil era. While there have been efforts to limit carbon emissions in the aviation industry by using alternate fuels, as with the car industry, electrical propulsion seems to be the way forward for air travel. However, electric air vehicles have more challenges than their land-based counterparts in terms of their onboard space and weight limits impacting performance. Today's batteries pack much less energy per unit weight and volume when compared to jet fuel. Accordingly, the required battery packs are simply too heavy to maintain efficient flight capabilities. These energy limitations become especially acute in small aircrafts. State-of-the-art electric motors partly compensate this disadvantage by being more efficient in converting energy into power, and major industry players, research organizations, and entrepreneurs are working on several possible paths to make commercial electric flying a reality. Now, one of the huge barriers here obviously with all technological development that we're dealing with today is the government racket of intellectual property stifling innovation force using the force of government to stifle the free flow of ideas the collaboration that humanity is capable of we would have this by now i mean if you watch even a great documentary who killed the electric car i mean at very least we'd all have electric cars by now if it wasn't for the u.s federal government's intellectual property racket stifling the implementation of these technologies. And I know it's one of those subjects that, uh, you know, you know it kind of takes a while to wrap your head around because we've been raised in this world that assumes that intellectual, is proper, intellectual property can be uh, akin to real property, and it's not. It can be a metaphor. There's a use for it in voluntary contracts. But the concept of, of, of being able to use force to limit the free flow of ideas is just not only ethically wrong, it is hugely holding back humanity. But I'll, I'm, I'll go ahead and cut to the punchline here because uh, it's not going to surprise you. The, one of the last questions that he asks, and which technological hurdles still stand in the way? One, battery technology. Two, successful development and FAA certification. Uh, and so already, this is, he's asked about technological hurdles, and the first one is a government one, although part of that is obviously developing the air traffic control, but compared to developing the fleets and the battery technology and everything else, 
programming the air traffic control to make sure we don't have in-air collisions is really not one of the significant hurdles in this. Three, vehicle performance and reliability in varied weather conditions. And yeah, I, I guess that question is going to be a, another engineering feed. Do they go down on windy days? Like, do we just not have them usable over certain wind speeds? Does that limit their applicability or their availability in certain areas? Does that mean that there's going to be uh, still a great reliance on self-driving electric cars, which we're going to have very soon here, of course? Um, and, and Elon Musk is very committed to it, the idea of the tubes. We have the tubes versus the drones. I mean, maybe that's what's coming. Um, and then, uh, let's see, number five, wait, wait, that was four, vehicle cost and affordability. Five, safety-related vehicle partial autonomy navigating congested skies. Okay, so that's the, you know, partial autonomy is, is you know, how much is going to be uh, connected to a network or sharing in, in terms of the navigation. Maybe it's over zones. You know, do you have the ability to pilot them? Or is it all automatic? You know, of course, these things have to be worked out. Not that hard. We'll figure it out. Got to get government out of the way so we can at least start testing this on a city-based level, right? And then seven, landing. Oh, no, six, uh, aircraft noise and air pollution, especially over populated areas. Although it says earlier in the article that uh, with the development of these technologies that they would be down to such a low level uh, in terms of the noise that it would be uh, un un indistinguishable generally from the background noise of a city as it is today. So, I mean, you compare it to vehicle noise, of course it's going to be quieter. Uh, I shouldn't say of course, could be very loud like helicopters, but they, they've got the answer to that. So, and then seven, landing and takeoff infrastructure, including landing pads at key city locations to deploy a fleet. So, <clears throat> I guess the punchline is that, yeah, ultimately, if it wasn't for government, we'd all have self-flying drone taxis by now. Thank you to Facebook for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making the connectivity of social media available to billions worldwide. However, we already have a better alternative in a blockchain-based solution at Steemit.com. I hope you'll join me there for this platform that is free of censorship and central control and pays you as a content creator a fair amount for your content being shared on the network. Unlike Facebook where, um, well, if the service is free, you are the product and your attention is not sold to advertisers on steamit.com. So please check it out. You can join me there at Adam Kokesh. And if you want to leg up and get some followers, please email some of your best content to adam at the freedomline.com and we'll share it into our stream if we think that it would be appropriate for our audience. So please join the new frontier in the information revolution at steamit.com.